If you've been following the gaming industry over the past few years, or play EA games like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, FIFA, etc., you have probably heard of the Frostbite engine. The engine that has turned into a scapegoat for failed projects like Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda. But what is the Frostbite engine? Where did it come from? And is it really the main culprit for EA's shortcomings? Before we go too far, if you don't know, an engine in game development is a developmental infrastructure on which games can be built. It provides tools like rendering, artificial intelligence, scripting, etc. An engine allows a developer to start on a functional baseline without having to reinvent the wheel every time they make a new game. You may have heard of industry standards such as Unity and the Unreal Engine. EA's different development teams used to all work off their own engine. The Infinity Engine, for example, was used at Bioware for Mass Effect and Dragon Age. The problem that EA wanted to solve is that, as each of these different teams would work on new projects, they would all individually have to spend time working on their engine to prepare it for the new project. This was time consuming and therefore expensive. So EA wanted their teams to all work off of a single robust engine. But EA didn't have an engine that could power all of these different games and different genres. And since the purpose of a unified engine was to be cost effective, they didn't want to pay to lease out popular engines in the industry such as Unreal. EA would find their answer in DICE. Digital Illusions Creative Entertainment, or DICE, are the developers behind the Battlefield series. EA purchased DICE back in 2006, and when DICE developed Battlefield Bad Company, they created a new engine, Frostbite, an engine they believed would be able to power Battlefield games for years to come. But it wasn't until seeing the power of Frostbite in Battlefield 3 that EA began to have bigger plans for the engine. Executives at EA believed they had found a robust engine, a unified platform to be more efficient and cost-effective for their studios. So during the development of Battlefield 4, they began pitching their studios the Frostbite engine. EA DICE general manager Patrick Bach said, If you look at the magnitude and complexity of a Battlefield game, you can see that you can build pretty much everything with this engine to a very, very high quality. One rumor that turns out to be false is that EA forced Frostbite onto its studios. This isn't true. While executives at EA definitely wanted a unified in-house engine for their developers, they believed it to be the best way to manage multiple studios, they never made their studios use it. They may have heavily incentivized studios to use it, but they gave the developers a choice. And we see that with Respawn Entertainment, the creators of Titanfall and Apex Legends. Respawn chose not to use the Frostbite engine, and decided to stick with the engine they knew and were comfortable with, Valve's Source Engine. They also used Unreal Engine for Jedi Fallen Order. Unfortunately, many other EA studios didn't make the same choice, whether through contract incentives or just the sales pitch of Frostbite. Battlefield 4, upon release, looked very impressive. It was large, with many players interacting with each other and different systems simultaneously. So you could see how someone would think this engine would be robust enough to power anything. And the Frostbite engine was excellent at making Battlefield games. It was very good at making large-scale multiplayer first-person shooters. But the majority of EA games aren't large-scale multiplayer first-person shooters, and studios ran into issues immediately. A team at Bioware working on Dragon Age Inquisition at the time had to create a dialogue system with Frostbite and make significant additions to the animation system, as the baseline system couldn't handle four-legged animals. Ghost Games, the developers behind the latest Need for Speed games, had to rework how assets load because of the speed of the car in their game. A lot needed to be added to Frostbite to make anything that wasn't a Battlefield game. The engine itself struggled with these additions as it wasn't built with those kinds of extras in mind. Bioware began working on another game internally called Blackfoot. It was intended to be a multiplayer-focused Dragon Age game, but in reality, the studio used the project to get used to Frostbite. An executive producer on the project said, Frostbite doesn't really understand the idea of stats or items or saving a game. Conversations, cutscenes, like a bunch of things that we take for granted, it doesn't really conceptualize. The robust unified engine EA wanted their studios to use to make large-scale AAA games was not robust at all, nor was it unified. As the different studios kept making additions and modifications to the engine, the baseline that everyone was working on kept changing. The end result? EA games released in a buggy, broken state. Everything from the newest Need for Speed or FIFA to the colossal disappointment of Anthem and Andromeda. Now, a lot of people will point to this period of EA games and say that Frostbite was the problem, and it certainly didn't help. But I think to attribute all of EA's shortcomings to the engine is a mistake. Frostbite did not cause the loot box controversy, for example. Frostbite did not turn every game into a field of microtransactions. If anything, it shows that EA was struggling externally with their consumers and internally with their developers and own engine. Though it is hard not to notice that the EA games people have enjoyed lately are not on the Frostbite engine. It's hard to tell what EA's plans for the future are. 
EA's newly purchased Codemasters have not used Frostbite for their new F1 games, but the Dead Space remake is, along with Dragon Age 4. Hopefully enough time and sacrifice has gone into the engine that we can expect working games from EA. The other X factor is that EA is looking for a buyout or a merger. While the Amazon buyout turned out to be just a rumor, who knows what a change of leadership and influx of money could do for the studios. Here's to hoping we get the old days back. The days of Mass Effect 2 and Need for Speed Most Wanted. The days of excitedly counting down to the next grand adventure, and not worrying about how much extra you'd have to pay for the whole experience, or if the game will work or not. Here's to hoping the studios at EA can reclaim their former glory.